On United People's TV, I've taken a look at Ralph Ragnick in detail. I've taken a look at Brendan Rodgers in detail and both of their coaching philosophies and ideologies in what I consider a proactive series of videos taking a look at potential manager options should Manchester United be sacking Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, whether that's in a week or in a month's time. These videos are there to help you understand about potential new managers. And lots of you have asked me to do one on Zinedine Zidane. So that's what I'm going to do in this video. Take a look at Zidane's coaching style, philosophy, ideology, tactics, formation, everything about Zidane to help you understand a bit more about Zidane as a manager. So please, if you would, by the end of it, drop a like on the video or subscribe to United People's TV if you want to see some more videos like this. But let's talk in depth about Zinedine Zidane. And there's no better place to start than to look at what Zidane himself has had to say about his own footballing ideology. And I'm going to go back to a documentary that was filmed in 2013-14 that took a look at Zidane when he was the assistant manager under Ancelotti and what Zidane had to say at that point in time. He said, football isn't that complicated. It's about passing. The higher up the pitch you play, the more dangerous you become. I'm on the player's side. I listen to them. I want my team to play spread the ball about whenever they have it play it forward from the back and make the best possible decisions before they even receive it when they don't have the ball i want them to track back i want them to try and win back the ball as high up the pitch as possible because that will see them avoid having to run an extra 80 meters all that gives teams balance some people will see things differently but it's as simple as that to me so zidane back in the day there sort of explaining really how he wants his teams to play in terms of the intensity winning it high up the pitch you're far more dangerous if you win it high up the pitch and for a lot of united fans it's what you want to hear right you don't want to hear about uh, managers who have an onus on defense but saying that zidane certainly <laughs> had a very tight-knit defense as well so it, it, it was quite a balanced unit he built but the more you read into zidane the more you do realize that he's not a manager like uh like Ralph Ragnick or Brendan Rodgers, for example, two managers we've taken a look at in detail here on United People's TV, who do have quite uh, well-defined philosophies and ideologies. Um, Zidane's a little bit different there. I'll get into that in a bit more detail as we go on. But Zidane is is not it's not as easy to define Zidane's football, apart from the fact that he bloody wins things, seriously wins things. And if you take a look at an interview back in 2018 with UEFA.com, Zidane here was he was asked about you know. Your third title in 2017 was a result of some highly effective and very solid away performances. What was key to that success is that I always remain faithful to the footballing philosophy that I conveyed to my players, regardless of who our opponents were. So Zidane, and, and this is something I've really started to learn properly whilst researching Zidane for this video, is he, as I said there, he's, he's not somebody who's got a clearly defined ideology we go back to this article here written by jonathan wilson in 2020 and he says the same thing here saying here that he apparently has no defined philosophy he's flexible and he wins there's no sense that he's pushing against the limits of football's possibilities he's left no mark on the tactical evolution of the game so it's kind of unlikely that we're going to be seeing a book written about zidane's tactics and how he's changed the game in the same way that pep football did or Mourinho's football did but nobody can really argue against Zidane's success three Champions Leagues in a row two league titles over two periods with Real Madrid Zidane might not have that clearly defined philosophy and ideology in terms of the overall principles behind this game but in terms of the style the formation is clear I'll get into that later in the video and in terms of success that is his philosophy that is his ideology he brings the trophies and the titles and you can't really argue with that. So maybe with Zidane, we have to go a little bit deeper and maybe look at the managers that he's played under to try and identify where his actual ideologies and philosophies lie. And if we go back to Juventus, he worked under Marcello Lippi and Carlo Ancelotti, two ridiculously top level Italian managers. And as I said, he worked under Ancelotti as an assistant manager in 2013-14. And that was his step away from being a player into being a coach obviously went into Real Madrid's academy teams also but that was an important year as well as working for those two managers there he worked under Del Bosque in the Galacticos period that period between 2001 and 2006 I think it was when Real Madrid were just spending money left right and center signing Luis Figo signing Zinedine Zidane signing David Beckham and they had some serious successes in there winning the Champions League winning I think one league title as well wasn't the biggest amount of success for sure 
And that's why Del Bosco ultimately lost his job. But they are probably the three managers that would have had the most influence on him. Obviously, he started his career in Cannes and Bordeaux, but it was when he went to Juventus and Real Madrid that he had most of his success as a player. And the Ancelotti period there, as I said, is probably Ancelotti had more of an impact on Zidane as a manager than Lippi did, maybe, or Del Bosque, simply because he worked under him as a coach too. So would have learned more about the actual managerial aspect to his game from Ancelotti in that year, rather than, you know, you, you pick up things as a player for sure. But I think one thing we can clearly say from Zidane is he has natural ability. If you look at his uh, his path through the Real Madrid uh, Castilla team, managing them and going straight into the deep end with Real Madrid, it was, it was a steep learning curve. Very similar to Pep Guardiola at Barcelona. Zidane had Similar, if not, he had unprecedented success with those three Champions Leagues in a row, back to back to back. Nobody had won it two times in a row before he managed to do it three times in a row. And he won titles in two different periods at Real Madrid in that first stint, and then he resigned in the second stint. And before he resigned, then he nearly won the double in the second time as well. Only pipped to the title in the last game of the season by Atletico Madrid. So the big thing I've really understood here from looking into Zidane is that, as I said, that philosophy and ideology isn't as well defined as other managers, but in terms of the success that he's brought with it, it's there. And it, it's quite hard to actually identify the roots and the pillars of it all. And that's, that's, that kind of makes him a little bit of a mystery and maybe why people have concerns about whether he could do it at Manchester United. Now, hypothetically, if he was to come to United, who would he bring in terms of his coaching staff? It's an important factor. We've obviously got Mike Phelan, Michael Carrick and Kieran McKenna, who would be unlikely to stay at the club if Solskjaer was replaced. And there are two main people who are inside that Real Madrid coaching staff. And the first one is David Batoni. Now, he is still out of a job having left after Zinedine Zidane left Real Madrid for the second time. So he is available. And the second one is Hamidou M. Saidi, who is a bit of a sort of an unknown entity, sort of kept into the background at Real Madrid as well. But both of those are still available. So both of those could come in to Manchester United, obviously you've got coaching, uh, goalkeeper, coaches, you've got medical teams, you've got uh, physios, X, Y, Z. But in terms of the main two people, it is those two who are both still available now for jobs. And while maybe the first few minutes of this video hasn't really helped you understand too much about Zidane, because it's, it's kind of a little bit of a mystery, in terms of his tactics, it's very well defined by comparison. Zinedine Zidane loves playing a 4-3-3. And we can show clear examples of this. Let's take a look at the starting 11s for Real Madrid in the 2016, 17 and 18 Champions League finals. The 2016 one here to begin with against Atletico Madrid. Navas with the back four of Marcelo, Pepe, Ramos and Carvajal. Casemiro is the holding midfielder with Cruz and Modric just in front and a front three of Ronaldo, Benzema and Bale. Let's fast forward now one year and let's see if there's any changes. Hardly any if you're looking at it, Navas at the back with Carvajal, Ramos, Varane. He came and he comes in for Pepe and Marcelo. A midfield three of a holding midfield of Casemiro, Cruz and Modric again. And a front three of Isco, Benzema and Ronaldo. So Isco coming in for Bale there. But the 4-3-3 still stands firm. One year on, what changes? Again, not much. You look at the back five. Navas, Marcelo, Ramos, Varane and Carvajal. Casemiro, Modric and Cruz. Ronaldo, Benzema and Isco. In fact, it didn't change at all. Maybe if Isco played a little bit more central in that game than he did a year earlier. But Zidane loves the 4-3-3. A holding midfielder 4-3-3. Casemiro is the man who allows the two playmakers in Cruz and Modric to advance forward. Cruz is somebody who typically would drop a little bit deeper, sort of receive the ball off Ramos and allow... That's how Real Madrid did the build-up play. Cruz was crucial to that. To the two deeper line playmakers were crucial to that. And Casemiro, the man to protect all of it, is crucial to that. So if you're looking at how Manchester United could do it, well, we don't have a Casemiro. So in that sense, it certainly wouldn't work straight away. But it's not as if that's the only formation he's used. But 4-3-3 for sure is definitely Zidane's main style of play. that He's, or he's using three consecutive Champions League finals. And Real Madrid won all three of them. And one interesting fact about that Champions League winning team in 2017 is this. If you take a look at the goals that they scored, it was a very, very balanced team. 16 assists came from the left-hand side. 16 assists came from the middle and 18 came from the right. It really very much was a team that had balance, had attacking balance going down the left and the right-hand side and the middle. There was threat across all 
three areas of the pitch. And Manchester United, we all know we have been very heavily reliant on going down the left for the last few years. Rashford being out for the start of the season certainly hurt United. And we all thought Jadon Sancho would play more on the right-hand side, but he just hasn't. Real Madrid's team under Zidane had balance. And if you fast forward to 2021 and see if there was any sort of change with Zidane in the second tenure at Real Madrid, take a look at this from Football Made Simple. They're showing the formations that were most used by him. Still the 4-3-3. But on different occasions, he used a 4-2-2-2. He did use a 4-2-3-1. And he also used three at the back. You can see that Real Madrid really were a possession-heavy team. And that's an interesting one there. You know, the 4-3-3 really was the, the pillar of, of Zidane's start of play at Real Madrid. But he did use other ones. So tactically, he does have that flexibility. And I think flexibility is probably the biggest word you're going to use, really, when talking about Zidane here. In terms of his overall philosophy, in terms of the ideology, it's, it's hard to define perfectly. Whereas you might find it easy to define with Pep Guardiola or easy to define with Jose Mourinho. You won't find it as easy to define with Zidane Zidane. And as I said before, maybe that's a reason why people will be concerned about whether he would have that success at United. Because it worked at Real Madrid. What's to say that sort of loose flexibility would work at Manchester United? Or is someone that we need now to come in is someone who does have that clearly defined structure that can really be replicated? That's the question I think people have. But an important counterpoint to that is to remember that Zidane did manage two slightly different Real Madrid teams. In that first team, we know who he had. He had Ronaldo in his prime, Bale, Benzema, Cruz, Modric, Casemiro. But we had Varane, he had Ramos. Wow, 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 wow. An incredible team. And Zidane got the most out of them. Clearly, he can manage the biggest egos in football. And that flexibility and that and giving players the, the freedom to express themselves within a certain degree clearly worked there. And then when he went back to Real Madrid, it was a slightly different Real Madrid. No, Ronaldo was there. They have Vinicius Jr. coming through. Uh, Asensio. It was a slightly different team. And it also worked there, winning the title, nearly winning the title the second year, only losing to Atletico, losing out, sorry, to Atletico on the last day of the season. So Zidane has done it in two different types of situations at Real Madrid. The first one was all about, it was basically a Galacticos team. And the second one was a bit of a transition, moving away from that Galacticos. Ronaldo leaving, Benzema coming towards the end. Bale, obviously, well, we know what happened with Bale at Real Madrid. And Cruz and Modric, a few years older. Ramos passed it. It was a different sort of team. And he still managed to find success there. So I don't think you can fairly say, ah, you know, Zidane just had everybody and that's the only reason he did it. Because, yeah, Real Madrid have always had amazingly quality teams. They've not had the sort of success that Zidane brought both times, really. And that's a credit to him as a manager. So you have to give him credit there. But as much as we don't really understand too much about the philosophy and the ideologies of Zidane, it's important to watch this video now because it will show how he brings it into action. This is his halftime speech in the 2017 Champions League final. One all at halftime against Juventus. Champions League, they've won it the year before against Atletico Madrid. This is what Zidane said at halftime when it was one all to the Real Madrid players. Solo dos cosas. Es una, es, es, es una final. Sabemos que es, es, es un partido difícil también para, para ellos. ¿vale? Lo más importante para nosotros, defensivamente, tenemos que estar más agresivo. Pero más agresivo en buen sentido de la palabra. No para, no para que saque la tarjeta. Lo importante es nosotros llegar a tiempo. Entonces, estar un poquito más cerca todos. Uno, uno de otro, más cerca y más agresivo. Tenemos que estar un poco más agresivo. ¿Vale? Cuando no tenemos el balón. Luego, ellos juegan con 4-4-2. Con Alves muy alto y Manduchich muy alto. Lo que tenemos que hacer nosotros es que ellos reculan también. Entonces nosotros un poquito más. Isco, cuando defendemos a la izquierda, jugando 4-4-2. Y luego con el balón, un poquito más entre línea. Pero pensando que también que nosotros cuando tenemos el balón, hemos dicho paciencia, jugamos más, más rápido por fuera. Más rápido por fuera y más cero, Dani, más arriba. Lo que, un, poqui, un poquito más. Tenemos que, cuando nosotros tenemos el balón, tenemos que tener ellos que defienden ahí, con Dani y con Marcelo, ¿vale? Y luego de segunda línea con Lucas, de vez en cuando, un poco más, y con Isco, cuando jugamos de un lado a otro, luego hay que romper, hay que, hay que hacer pri, pri en cara o, o Karim a la espalda, o al contrario, lo que trabajamos un poco la semana. Porque tocamos, tocamos, como, y luego 
el, el gol es esto, jugamos por fuera, centro y al raso y, y marcamos. La única cosa, nosotros tenemos que meter un poquito más amplitud ¿vale? y ritmo, pero no jugar, no jugar mucho en dentro, lo que tenemos que hacer de un lado a otro, de un lado a otro. ¿De acuerdo? Y luego defensivamente vuelos, meter un poco más de, 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 de pierna y ya está, nada más. Y, y seguir trabajando, ¿eh? porque tenemos que sufrir, es una final, sufrimos, pero siempre con la serenidad. Nosotros pensar que va a llegar otra vez el gol. ¿De acuerdo? Vamos. Real Madrid went on to win that final 4-1. So you can hear and you can see, you can hear by watching that video how much of an understanding of the game Zidane does have. He might not have that philosophy and ideology written down in paper form, but you can hear that he's very good at expressing it to his players, what he wants them to do. The instructions were very obvious there. And I think that's something that people really feel about Solskjaer is that he doesn't have that sort of acumen. You can't, that's, that's an assumption, right? We don't know what goes on inside that dressing room, but to see Zidane there, at such a crucial time with given a, a very clear and defined speech it goes to show that he can convey that message to the players and it worked in the second half Real Madrid came out and dominated that second half so he knows what he's doing and in terms of the insight into Zidane I think that really that really helps us understand it so while there might as I said there might not be that clear ideology of this is Zinedine Zidane's style of football like a Pep Guardiola book there won't really be that on Zinedine Zidane not in that sense, not in terms of changing the game and changing how football's played and having a new spin on it. He's not that sort of manager, but what he does, he does very, very well. And clearly over, I mean, Zinedine Zidane's one of the biggest names that has ever been in football, really. And that presence allows him to, allowed him, sorry, to work with the biggest players in football, the biggest egos and names in football and get the respect from them, get the performances from them, and overall get a team that was just incredible. That Real Madrid team, to win three in a row, unbelievable. As good as they were, it still required good coaching. So I hope this video has helped you understand a bit more about Zidane. There is a bit of a, a mystery to certain elements of it. It's not as open uh, as other managers, as I said. But what you can see from that video, from that halftime speech there, what you can see from what he said about his own philosophies, you can see from the experiences that he's had, the successes that he's had, the use of the 4-3-3, you know, he, he's really got that clearly defined. I hope this has helped you understand a bit more about Zidane and maybe you can now think of how that could apply to Manchester United. Would you be concerned that he couldn't re replicate that success at Manchester United and that what happened at Real Madrid could only have happened at Real Madrid with that team at that time? You let me know what you think about everything in the comments below as always. I hope this video has helped you understand a bit more about Zidane. If it has, please drop a like on the video and subscribe if you're new. And as I've said after the Ragnik videos and after the Rogers videos, these videos are me as a Manchester United fan being proactive, taking a look into other managers who could come in because I refuse to believe that Manchester United are fully supporting Ole Gunnar Solskjaer and the way things have gone between Liverpool and City and no change, there's nothing to suggest that things will change now. They Maybe they will, but these videos will still serve as understanding and knowledge and research for further down the line whenever it comes that Solskjaer is replaced as manager and that's why I'm happy that I've done them so please drop a like on it if you have liked it and let me know in the comments what you really really think about Zidane to United and whether you feel it could work 